All right, so other than the ports, Nigerians will start paying 12.5% tax on telecommunication services as the federal government plans to implement 5% inclusive excise duty on telecommunication services in the country. Now, payments are expected to be made monthly and uh, on or before the 21st of every month. Well, at a time when income is already squeezed, but the government itself uh, is seeking for ways to improve revenue. So how do we find a balance? We'll have uh, Olade Jo Adeyemi for, as a senior manager at Anderson joining us now to help us find that balance. Uh, good to have you in the studio, uh, Olade Jo. So thank you so much. much for joining us. Thank you, Ini. Thank you for having me. Okay, so tell us what exactly does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's good to always start from there, right, to know precisely what does this mean. Um, the additional um, levy is actually excise duty, right? And it's been on for a while, interestingly, <laughs> because... So we're paying the, without knowing that we're paying? No. When I said it's been on for a while, not that it's been implemented. Okay, the conversation The law, exactly. exactly. The law has been promulgated since um, 1st of January 2021 through the Finance Act 2020, 20. you know. So what happened was that that act actually um, amended one of the very key provisions in the Excise, um, Excise Tariff Act, you know, such that telecommunication services, you know, have then been added as part of accessible um, 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 products as it were, you know. Typically, you know that Excise um, traditionally is, is, uh, has always been paid on um, certain kind of product, you know, so much so that in some jurisdiction it could be referred to as sin tax, you know, when you want to perhaps control the consumption of certain goods, you know, so things but like alcohol, absolutely, cigarettes absolutely, and like you know, that. beers and what have you. So, but what what is happening now, or what has happened by reason of that amendment, is actually a fundamental departure of what typically happens, you know. So that's why it's strange to a lot of Nigerians and that's why it's generating a lot of dust, particularly uh, because of the references that have then been made to it in recent times, you know, by key government um, officers. You know, that is then making it to generate a lot of dust. So. Okay, so should we say that the government is doing this because as we know, the nation is broke and we do need extra revenue? You can, you can, you can say that again, Ini, because the truth is... Um, Government is looking for how to generate more and more from non-oil, you know, um, non-oil sector, and tax, of course, is going to um, is going to be the major bailout, you know, in one of those areas. So, interestingly, um, government is looking for ways to continue to increase the revenue, and looking for how to implement laws that have already been passed, you know, so much so that. Um, the quantum of revenue that is being generated um, seamlessly would increase. Hmm. Because one would ask, I mean, if it's, uh, it's since last year, right, Correct. and then it's, this is the third quarter, the fourth quarter of 2022. Correct. And we're now talking about the implementation. It does uh, ask, but, but let's, let's, let's see what it means for okay. you and I, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> who make calls, <laughs> who use data on the different platforms that mm. are available in Nigeria. What mm. does it mean? It is, it, is, it is exactly what it is, right? Because... You'll be paying 5% more? Or? Yeah. So this is how it works. Typically, excise, um, you can categorize it as indirect, meaning um, the major manufacturer, as it is for products, for instance, the major manufacturers will be the one um, administering it or will be the one accounting for it. But of course, as you'd imagine, the cost is going to be eventually passed, passed down, down to the consumer. To the consumer which is where you get the 12.5% um, from because the tax itself or the levy itself is 5%. You know? But traditionally, there's been um, VAT of 7.5% on telecommunication services, you know, being qualifying services for value-added tax purposes. So when you then add that 5% to um, the 7.5% that has been on the ground, then you have 125 So in clear terms, what does it mean? Of course... Um, you and I will have to be parting, <laughs> parting with much more every time we, um, we, we get um, any of those telecommunication services, whether it's data, whether you are making calls, you know, any services, you know, any of the services at all. You're going to be paying 5% more <sighs> absolutely, than what you... Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, some, some people even say that the experience these days indicates that it seems with the hike or surge in operating costs, 
that uh, the airtime you buy doesn't last as long as, <laughs> even though we have not been officially notified. Interest, interestingly, right, you've actually seen, I mean, in recent times, I've seen um, some well-meaning Nigerians actually complaining, you know, about um, their data or about the their bonuses being wiped out and all of that. So this had not if even still happened. still bonuses, there Exactly. Is. So this had not even happened, right? And then you are having that kind of agitation. But um, quite frankly, what you are going to have, because even, even the Minister of Communication, right? Yes, I saw openly, he's against it, yes. Exactly, you know, and, and you would wonder. Since he's the government. not part of the, exactly. exactly. So maybe, maybe, maybe the, the issue, you know, the bulk of the issue really is about the timing. You know, this is a time when Nigerians are actually, you know, um, struggling with a lot. We have been hit, you know, from different angles. Um, just about two weeks ago, the fuel price, you know, went up. Um, unofficially. Bakery, ex unofficially, <laughs> so to speak. You know, um, bakery um, associations of um, bread, bread makers and, so, you know, so there's a lot of and it's, agitation. And it's not just Nigeria. I guess it's also important to note that it's not just Nigeria. Absolutely. I mean, we're talking of recession. Uh, we're talking of stagflation, even in the UK, recession in the United States. Absolutely. In uh, Europe, uh, energy costs. Absolutely. You know, neighboring countries also, also have all of these challenges. Absolutely. Inflation everywhere. Absolutely. So Nigeria is just actually also looking for how to um, deal with own, you know, peculiar challenges amidst all of these um, global yeah, well, issues. Well, we'll get to talking about if this is the best <laughs> way we could deal with it, because if, uh, if uh, the people are squeezed, yeah. the cost of living is high, energy yeah. cost is high, transportation, commodities, inflation is everywhere, then should the government be putting more, you know, on at the a people? Time, at a time like this. Even though we do know that the government actually needs the revenue. Uh, but, but let's look at our neighbors. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes they say, oh, it's, it's cheapest in Nigeria. <laughs> Why are you complaining and things? What's going on with it? Yeah, so, so this, this is actually not um, something that is um, equally strange. There was, a, there was a statement made last year, shortly before, was it last year or 2020, shortly before that Finance Act was passed by one of the government officials saying that um, in, from their own survey... You know, I think they appears, release a list. Yes, it appears... Almost all African countries, you know, actually have this excise, um, excise um, duty. duty, you know, on telecommunication. You know, then when you look at bigger economies like the like the United States, for instance, you know, it 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 actually subsists, you know, there. But truth is, can you can an economy like the Nigerian economy borrow a leaf from an economy like a sophisticated economy like the U.S. economy? Perhaps not, you know. So, um, but um, the truth is. The impact is going to be felt, you know, by every Nigerian because that is 5% more than you are bearing or you've been bearing before, especially when the telcos, and, you know, there are just, there are just a couple of them, just maybe about yes, four of them, yeah. especially when um, they pass it down, which is usually the case for, for most, um, most times excise duty is applicable on, on, on specific product line. Hmm. Well, you, you, you know, uh, we also agree that the government needs to raise money at a time like this, especially when we look at some of the parameters, uh, revenue. I mean, our debt servicing is, is now more than a revenue, so these are desperate times. But is this the best way? I, I think that's, that's a question, you know. Is this the only way left for the government? We know that tax is a major source of revenue for the government, but when we look at the peculiarities in Nigeria... Do you think that this is the best way? I, I honestly do not think so. Um, and the reason is because there are several other um, initiatives that could be deployed. And truth be told, the government is trying and it would continue to try its best. If you look at the informal sector, for instance, there's a lot of combing that needs to be done there. You know, and you can actually use um, deployment of technology to bring a lot of people into the tax nets. You know, have you... As, as a government, have we, or as a nation, have we exhausted those options yet before we then start going into more and more uh, marked taxes, you know, like, like we have just seen here? So uh, to answer that question specifically, is this the best that can be done? I honestly do not think so. And I think uh, there are a lot of well-meaning Nigerians that also believe the same way. That's why the uh, Minister of Communication actually you know, I mean, I saw the video, you yes. know, it was like saying, no, this is, this is not the way to go. And then um, consultations were not made and all of it. But like I mentioned, this had been, this had been passed since January 2021. 
you know, um, practical challenges relating to its implementation. It's what has probably delayed it to this point, you know, and then now government is trying to um, throw it out there so that the, the populace knows what is coming <laughs> and then maybe feel the pause before the actual implementation then happens. Yeah, you know, looking at alternatives, a lot of people have also talked about if the government really wants to save money, mm. you know, or look at the revenue, then there's so many leakages that could be plugged. We're talking about oil theft. Mm. Nigeria losing about a billion dollars in the first quarter of mm. the year. Mm. You know, that is one leakage. Uh, you're talking about even in the tax system, mm. a lot of compromises. You and I know <laughs> that. I mean, companies are charged this amount and then they go backwards and, and settle one or two people and get on with it. You know, I guess if these leakages were also closed, if these leaking taps were plugged, then perhaps the government might have more money in its purse. Um, you're right. And um, the issue of achieving efficiency, you know, after, after you've looked at the cost side of things, I mean, after you've looked at the revenue side of things, you also have to look at the cost. So your, um, your deduction is actually very correct to say, can you tighten the news more? Can you ensure that you are efficient in your spending as a government? You know, can you ensure that um, all of the costs you know, that you're actually making or you're expending, they are necessary, you know, for instance, and they are not, you don't have situations where costs are, are, are overblown unduly, you know, so you're very right. And then in terms of tax practices, um, in terms of revenue leakages from tax practices, um, to be honest, that happens in, in every part of the world, you know, but the question is to what extent can it be managed? Can you reduce the impact? And that's why reliance on technology you know, cannot be, um, the need for reliance um, on technology cannot be overemphasized. Because once you are able to dis um, um, separate the process, the process is repetitive, and then you use technology to, to lock it in, it becomes very difficult for, um, for, human, for human to begin to meddle with it or tamper with it or then um, become subjective, you know, to human feeling or who you know or how you do it. You understand what I'm saying? So um, you, are, you, are, you are quite right mm. you know, with that point. Mm. And, and then another conversation has also been if the government, especially at the top, even, even in the, in the sub-federal uh, level, the mm. states, mm. can cut their running costs. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if if we're desperate about uh, you know boosting our revenue and cutting down on expenditure, mm. I guess we have to really look, and not just look at the consumers. Mm. Consumers are squeezed everywhere. They are squeezed, and, and and quite frankly, it's it's easy to continue to mold the willing horse, you know, because you always believe you can get more and more and more and more. So because this is already tested, and if you look at, if you look at this proposal, for instance, this, um, this um, excise duty, you know, the, the mannerism of, um, of, um, of recovering it or of getting it is going to be very seamless because you're talking about just four telcos, right? They are the ones that are going to have the obligation, you know, however they fix it, whether they pass it down or they absorb it entirely, as a, as a government, is not your business, you know, quote unquote. So you just want to be sure that they are complying, you know. So when you look at that, it, it appears there isn't much work that would be so it's required. So an easy way for exactly. the government to raise money. <laughs> exactly, something like that, you know. Unlike having to um, um, put up initiatives that would make you um, comb the informal sector, for instance, you know. Um, the, all the babalages in, in Lagos Island market and, you know, all those uh, market women selling clothes and all that. So how do you ensure that they all, every one of them, everyone that is a resident, you know, every company and every SME is contributing its own um, fair share to the post, you know, that's, that's something Some more sophisticated. Some people will argue with you that those guys are already paying a whole lot. It's just being collected informally and going to different <laughs> sectors because, I mean, you do have those guys who claim to be local government uh, agents or something. Yeah, right. Also, you know, harassing those, we're giving them tickets yeah, right. every morning and every evening. Yeah, and, and those yeah. are taxes. Yeah, you're yeah, right. But those, those taxes actually have um, different types. There are types that, there are, there are taxes that are collectible by states. There are taxes that are collectible by um, federal. There are taxes that are collectible by the local government. You know, at the local government level, maybe like levies, you know, and what have you. So if that's what they are collecting at those levels, then it's okay. But when you have small businesses, you know, and 
a lot has actually been done in recent time to bring those businesses into the tax nets, you know, because of the um, um, zero percent. You know, if you're a small business, your revenue is less than um, less than 25 million, your tax rate is going to be zero percent. The idea is come into the net first. So when you grow, <laughs> we wouldn't be able to get much Shop more from you. you. <laughs> exactly. That and I think another thing. motivation for expanding that net is what are the taxes used for? Absolutely. Okay, for instance, the consumers cannot, uh, well, almost cannot escape paying this tax, right? Mm. But what am I going to enjoy with this additional cost, you know, that, that I'm uh, incurring? Yeah, spot on. Like, like I always say to people, um, issue of taxation is a social contract. I play my part as a, as a citizen, and I expect the government to also play its part. If either party fails, you know, there's going to be imbalance, you know, in the, on the pendulum. And that's exactly what the challenge is with our nation. Yeah, mostly. Well, thank you so much. Oladi Joadiemi, senior manager at Anderson. Now, Nigerians should get set. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't think we can escape this. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Thank okay. you so much for We'll take them me. to court. <laughs> It's already a law, so <laughs> it's already a law. So I mean, we should expect to pay about 12.5 percent mm. on uh, consumption on telecommunication uh, commodities, uh, calls, data, and all of that, mm. real soon. But uh, well, we'll see how that goes, and we'll follow up on the conversation here on Business Morning, and of course on Channel Television. Let's take a break now, and when we come back, we we'll head to the commodities space. This is still Business Morning on Channel Television. <laughs> 